Welcome to Law Talk on WMKV, a public service program hosted through the staff of the law firm Schwartz, Baines, Ruby, and Slavin, determined to see problems and opportunities from the client's perspective. Law Talk is designed to provide listeners with general information and insight into the many areas of the law and is not meant to be taken as specific legal advice. You should always consult a professional familiar with your own situation. If you'd like to join the conversation on the program, you can call 513-772-9658 or toll free 877-772-9658. Now, Law Talk on WMKV. Good afternoon. Welcome to Law Talk. Uh, my name is Don Hordes with the law firm of Schwartz, Mains, Ruby, and Slavin, and I will be hosting today. This is a public service program for our listeners to educate them on various aspects of the law. If you want to call in today, this is a call-in show. You can call in at 772-9658, or if you're outside the listening area, you can call toll-free, 877-772-9658. We are very fortunate today to have with us as a guest, Michael Napier. He is a certified financial planner with the firm of Haran & Associates. Haran has served as a trusted advisor and thorough planner uh, in the area of life insurance, estate planning, business planning, and employee benefits. Uh, they've been in business for 60 years servicing the Cincinnati community. Mike has been a financial planner since 1999 and has been with Haran for almost three years now. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Don. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about a subject which is very near and dear to everyone's hearts because we all eventually have to uh, 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 come to grips with Social Security. We all hopefully become 62 at some point in our lives, and we are then eligible for Social Security. It can be a very important uh, uh, aspect of one's financial planning and retirement nest egg. And uh, Mike is going to guide us through uh, how employees of various companies or self-employed individuals can prepare for the future and how Social Security fits into that structure. Um, Mike, why don't you uh, give us some idea of exactly what you do for Haran? Oh, thanks, Don. I am a holistic financial planner, which means I prepare comprehensive plans, essentially looking at all areas of, of one's financial life. Uh, as Don said, I'm a certified financial planner, and my background is in estate planning, tax, retirement income, so Social Security, what, we, what we'll be talking about today. Uh, I have a de special designation in Social Security. It's called the Social Security National Social Security Ad Advisor, and it's offered by the National Social Security Ad Association. What does that entail? So that entails uh, there's a there's a a live class that you must uh, must must go through uh, three days of, of comprehensive uh, planning ideas. Uh, it's taught by a, a local gentleman. His name is Jim Blair. And he had, he worked and managed a Social Security office for thirty plus years. Mm -hmm. Take the class, uh, take a comprehensive exam, pass the exam, and continue to learn on Social Security. Uh, when you talk about uh, serving as a financial planner, uh, Mike, uh, uh, what is the nature of your client base? Are they uh, companies or individuals or a combination or, or what preponderates? Good good question. So. Uh, my typical client is uh, typically age 58 to age 65, 66, folks just getting ready to retire. Uh, typically a professional, typically a small business owner. Haran, we do quite a bit of, uh, of work in the medical field. So I have uh, doctors, hospital administrators as clients, teachers, professors. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically look at uh, looking through their insurance, their retirement cash flow, investments, tax, and estate planning. When I think of uh, retirement plans, Mike, I generally think of uh, people's portfolio. They, they have stocks, they have bonds, they have uh, income from their uh, 401k plans or pensions that they receive from their employer. Where does uh, Social Security fit in and why do you, uh, what, what attracted you to focusing on Social Security? Good, uh, good question. So like Medicare, like health insurance, uh, I know Chris Meehan from Haran Associates was on last year. 
Social Security is can be uh, misunderstood and it's very complex. So uh, the majority of us don't understand it. Uh, there are a lot of strategies and rules behind it. For example, a married couple getting ready to file for Social Security can file 11 different ways. 11 ways. 11 different ways and, and uh, looking forward to talking about that in the show. But people do need advice uh, because once you start collecting, generally you can't change your mind on this. Uh, when Social Security, uh, I know I, I have many clients uh, who are individuals as well as companies. A lot of, a lot of clients l have said they look to Social Security as basically uh, the major portion of their, uh, their uh, investment uh, income in their retirement years. And uh, I don't know to what extent. I know Social Security varies, I assume, with how much money you made during your lifetime and what your salary was during the last few years of your life. But um, even for people who are, you know, doing well uh, in their jobs, is Social Security, does that pay a, a lot of money? Can people live on just Social Security alone when they retire? Uh, sure. And, and, and to your point, this is probably the, uh, the biggest decision for a retiree because Social Security, in, in many cases, is the is, – is the, Sometimes it's the one and only cash flow item that they have. The average benefit last year on Social Security was roughly $1,230 a month. That was what an average person collected on Social Security. That would be hard to live on $1,200 a month, I would think. Absolutely. And, and so Social Security is based off the highest 35 years of your earnings and uh, the, the, the most you can, can collect. So if you've been making over 100000 a year, for quite some time, for, for near, nearly 30, 35 years, the most you can collect is a 2,500 at age 66. 2,500 a month? 20, actually, it's 2,533 a month is the most someone can collect, and those, for, those are for the folks that are in the higher income bracket at age 66. So if someone's making 100,000, 200, or 500, uh, it'd be nice if all of our listeners earn that kind of money, but uh, they they can only hope at most to make from Social Security is twenty five hundred dollars a month, or basically about thirty thousand dollars a year. That's right. So uh, I would imagine most people need more than Social Security, but it's still, it's uh, I would imagine for most people, that's a pretty hefty part of uh, their retirement. Typically, uh, I, I see typically sixty to sixty five percent of, of of one's income. At retirement is on Social Security for your for your mid-level uh, income. Hmm. One of the uh, one of the the newer w w Social Security just recently uh, they they've stopped sending out statements, and so this happened in 2009 to reduce costs at the Social Security office. Uh, recently, all all Social Security all folks want to know what their benefit is. Uh, they're no longer getting annual statements. You've got to go online. And, and 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 download your your Social Security statement. It's uh, www.socialsecurity.gov, and it is tricky. Uh, you've got to uh, you've got to go through a logon, create a logon. But it's funny how Social Security does it. They they actually link link the logon the questions with your credit report. So I, when when I created my logon a, a, a year or so ago, they asked me questions such as, how much my monthly mortgage amount, just to get the log on. Mm. So my advice is, when you start trying to figure out what kind of benefit I, I have, or I, I'm going to be getting, uh, going online, make, make sure you have your financial history, knowing what you're paying for your cards. It's kind of funny, but knowing what you're paying for your cards, your mortgage, because they're going to ask those questions. And, and personally, uh, my wife does the bills, so I, I remember. Mine what, too. Yeah, so uh, so I had to, I had I had to actually stop and ask her what what those amounts were. Um, getting back to the real basic question, so often you read about in the paper and you read on the internet that uh, Social Security is on its way out, that they uh, they cannot uh, continue to pay out what they're paying without exhausting the trust fund in which the Social Security contributions are placed. It sounds like a scare tactic, and I don't know whether it's valid or not. Is it, What do you think? I mean, do you believe that uh, as we currently run the system, that uh, people who are now, let's say, in their 50s or 40s are going to have nothing when they come up for retirement? It is scary. I, I agree with you, Don. And uh, the, the Congressional Budget Office came out 
and, and their estimates is at uh, at 2033, uh, the trust fund will be insolvent, and at that point, only 75 percent of benefits will be paid. So in 2033, we're scheduled to deplete the trust fund, okay, and 75 percent will be paid after that. And what's more scary. Uh, is is uh, the disability on Social Security? Uh, we're scheduled to run out of that on in and, and 2016, and after 2016, 80 percent of the benefits would be paid, according to some of these estimates. Do you believe that? I, I I think folks are getting older. More people are going on Social Security, so there's less <laughs> of us paying into Social Security. So I, I do believe it, but I think there's some some painless ways to reform the Social Security system. Well, yeah, I, I hear about that, too. Uh, one way, I guess, the, the most unpainless way, I would assume, would be to cut benefits. But nobody wants that to happen. Everyone gets used to getting their check in the mail, and, and they, they basically drive their monthly budgets based on the size of that check. But if you don't cut the size of the check, what else can you do that might be more painless? That's a good question. So there, there's four different ways that uh, that Congress and, and what we're talking about right now uh, to be to be able to keep Social Security solvent. Um, one is ra- raising the age for, for folks like myself. Uh, I'm 36, and so if uh, 36. I'm 36, good grief! I know I sound closer to 70 or so on on the radio. I'm not no, sure. you don't. Good. Okay. Uh, so raising raising the age. Uh, one year for, for the younger folks, folks that are 35, 40, 45, would, would, uh, would help the problem. Raising more revenue would also help the problem. What do you mean by that? So uh, it's funny, when I sit down with clients and I do budgeting for them, yeah. I typically tell them, hey, you either got to make more money or spend less. And so well, one that's, way... That's a, that's a good example. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows yeah. that. So no one same, wants to hear it. So the same with this. Yeah. Raising revenue right now, the, the, the way that the government raises the revenue on Social Security is through payroll tax. That's how they're funding Social Security mm-hmm. right now. It's 6.2% of your earned income, up to uh, $113,700. And so you pay 6.2% of that. After the 113, you don't lo- you no longer pay any more payroll tax on the Social Security. So the thought is... Raise that to two hundred thousand, or raise that to the first two hundred fifty thousand to be able to keep it solvent. So basically, what you're saying is that if once you, if you earn a, a threshold income of one hundred and fifteen thousand a year, no more is Social Security taken out of that extra money earned. That's correct. So, uh, so the the well the wealthier people, basi- basically, basically um, get a little benefit. They don't have any deductions anymore. So if you just told someone making two hundred thousand and we're going to continue taking Social Security out of out of their paychecks, that would obviously, like you said, put more money in the system. Just like to do with Medicare, it's just right. the same type of thing. Right. Uh, the other idea that that actually the current the Obama's talking about, President Obama, is to uh, link the inflation factor. So the raise that you're getting on Social Security each year, link that to chain CPI instead of re- regular CPI. What's the difference there? The difference is the chain CPI is linked to more of the items that, that you and I are buying more of, so groceries, uh, and, and, and not totally linked to, to oil and, and, and other, other factors. So essentially, it would reduce your inflation number by about 1% per year. So the average inflation right now is, is 3%. So if you, if you look back from when Social Security started, you're getting an average of 3% inflation mm-hmm. each year. Last year it was 1.7, or actually this year it's 1.7%. 2012 it was 3.6%. The thought of the thought of the matter is to reduce that okay. roughly. Yeah, hold that thought there, Mike. We have to take a break. We will be back in about a minute. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Law Talk. We are here today with Mike Napier from Haran & Associates to talk about uh, Social Security is part of one's financial planning. I neglected to mention earlier, we will be on one hour today, not our half hour usual show. So you'll have plenty of time to call in. Our number here in the studio is 772-9658 or toll free 877-772-9658. This is a golden opportunity for our listeners to talk to a seasoned professional who will answer any questions they may have about about Social Security and how it fits into their retirement picture. Um, uh, 
let's get down to more practical matters, uh, uh, Mike, dealing with uh, the average individual and how we collect Social Security. Um, uh, I know uh, the earliest you can collect Social Security is, what, 62 years of age? That's right, 62. But you don't have to take it at 62, do you? No, you do not. Um, can you opt for a, a later payout, a later, a later beginning of the checks? Absolutely. So, uh, Social Security calls kind of your normal payout, uh, full, the full retirement. They call it full retirement age. So for, for, uh, for, for most of us, the full retirement age is age 66. That is the time that, you won't, that you'll get your full benefit without any deductions or without any increases. So every year before age 66, if you collected at age 62, for example, you would take your full retirement amount and deduct 7% per year off it. Okay. So a 7% deduction. Every year you wait. So you can wait. You would get an increase by 8% from age 66 to age 70. What happens at age 70? At age 70, uh, there's no more 8% increases. So it's kind of foolish not to take it at age 70. There, okay. There's no reason you wouldn't take it at age 70. So that was, those are the three numbers I hear, 62, 66, and 70. And you get, and if you wait till seventy, that means you're rewarded by getting more per month. Right. So it's it's roughly uh, the, the difference between waiting between sixty six and seventy is a thirty two percent increase. Wow. So your your average check, we had talked about the average check of twelve hundred dollars. Uh, that that's a four hundred dollar increase uh, be, be, uh, between taking the twelve hundred at sixty six versus waiting a seven. You would have a roughly a sixteen hundred dollar check at that time. So I imagine you get a lot of calls from your clients as to when they ought to take the money. I would imagine just looking at it from a simplistic standpoint, Mike, uh, I, I, mean, I'm, I just turned 69, and uh, I started taking my Social Security at age 66, and I was saying, gee, maybe I ought to wait till 70 when I can get more money a month. Uh, why shouldn't I wait till 70? So uh, I imagine some people would just want to hold off as long as they could to get the big bucks at age 70. But are there other reasons why they shouldn't do that? Right. That's a good point. Uh, so other reasons, uh, why, why take it early? Uh, you've got poor health. You, you don't have longevity in your family. Go ahead and take it while you can, while, while you're still living. Uh, the philosophy behind Social Security, I have clients that say, hey, I don't believe Social Security is going to be around. I want to take it while I can. Some folks say at age 66, some folks say, you know, I, I want the money now because I've got more energy. I, I can do more things now that I could I'm waiting to age 75 or waiting till age 70 to take it. So they want to take it, enjoy it now versus waiting. Is there like a, like a, a, a break point as to when you kind of even out? In other words, if you start taking it at 66 instead of 70, you have those four full years in which you're getting money, whereas if you waited till 70, you'd get zero during those four years, but at 70, you start earning more per month. How long does it take before you break even? Another good question. So uh, to, to break even, mo mo most of the time, it, it's right around 80 to 81. Okay. So if I waited till age 70, and then I started taking it, and by my 81st birthday, I will have caught up. And start making more. Start making more. But again, the next question is, after you're 81, how many people are going to want to spend that money, I guess you're right. It depends on their lifestyle, their genes, their longevity. Uh, be interested in hearing from what other people out there in the listening audience have to say. The number here is 772-9658 or toll-free 877-772-9658. Um, uh, what if you're married? How do you handle that? I mean, uh, let's say, and this is not a good example anymore, but I, up until about 30 years ago, many wives did not work outside the house, so they didn't have the work history to get their own Social Security, so they must have derived some Social Security coverage from their husbands, correct? That's right. Uh, so, how, so, but now you see more and more it's not even a big revelation anymore. It's been reality for the past 30 years. I imagine most women work outside the house at some point, and they develop Social Security eligibility of their own. So what, how, does it, um, how does spousal benefits work? Uh, let's say your wife may not have earned as much as you did, and, 
and her Social Security checks might be a lot less than yours are. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. So you don't always have to collect Social Security off your record. So uh, if, if, if my wife uh, has a larger benefit than I do, I could get the greater of half her benefit or my complete benefit. But my wife has to be, or the spouse has to be age 66 for you to take off her or his record. So, so for example, uh, my wife and I, let's say we're the same age. We are turning age 66. My benefits are 1000 a month. And my, my, my wife's benefits are 2500 a month. I could get the greater of half of hers, which would be 1250 or mine, which would be 1000 Mm-hmm. So typically, it, it, it's wise to take the the uh, you know, the, the greater amount, and you, you've got to be real careful uh, when you elect this because the Social Security Administration is not always going to give you advice when you call them. So you'll go down there, and and and, and they're going to give you options. They're not going to give you advice. So there is there's internet software out there that you could you could enter your data into, and they're going to tell you the best way to do it and and when to take off each other's records. Financial advisors like myself. Uh, getting advice from us, having us run through the software, uh, I, I'm a, I highly recommend that. So let's let's take a um, just for the audience out there, Mike. Take a typical example, and I I think I'm still correct on this. There are a lot more women in the workforce who make as much as, if not more, than their husbands. But but for the people who are now in their 60s, like me. Uh, I would, I'd be, I think, it would be safe to state that most of the time the husband is making more than the wife. Okay, and so he has a greater work record. Uh, so when he turns 66, and let's say his wife hasn't hasn't turned 66 yet, he has a choice. I guess he can he can just opt for something that just gives him Social Security benefits, and when he dies, his wife gets nothing, or or. Or can he opt for something where he may take less himself, but then if he dies, his wife picks up a monthly benefit of her own? So, yeah. Another How good, does that work? Another good point. Uh, so the, the if, if your spouse were to die, you would get the, the greater of your benefit or her benefit. Okay. So we, sometimes it is wise to let your benefit grow, or at least have one benefit grow, maybe take one and delay the other. We have a, a call from Diane on line one. Diane, okay, are you there? That? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Diane. What can we do Hi. for you? I'm uh, 65, and I know you have to register with the Social Security Administration before you turn. I'm sorry, I'll be 65 in January. I know you have to register before you turn 65, but I'm really wondering what the benefit is to waiting until you're 70 or 66, which is my retirement age, versus retiring at 66. Are you, uh, are you do you have a retirement uh, income through your uh, company or where you worked? Yes, but it's marginal. Okay. And so, and so Diane, uh, thanks for calling. If uh, so, are you working right now? Yes, I am. Okay, and do you plan? And on... I plan to work for three more years. Okay, and so uh, one one thing that I think you must understand is if if you're taking benefits early before age sixty six, uh-huh. there is an income uh-huh. test. So for for every two dollars you make over fifteen thousand dollars, roughly, uh-huh. for every two dollars you make over fifteen thousand, your Social Security benefit is going to be reduced by one dollar. Okay. So so if you're making thirty forty thousand dollars, they they uh, your Social Security check might be zero. So okay. it might be wise to wait till age sixty six. So after age sixty six, there's no income test. Okay. So at that time, you can make as much as you want. You can keep on working and still collect. Okay. So okay. so so for you, I would I would think uh, waiting till your full retirement age, sixty six, would probably make right. more sense. Right. That's... Now, what would be the difference between sixty six and waiting until I'm seventy? So for every in terms of benefits. In terms of benefits, so if for every year you postpone, you're getting an uh-huh. eight, you're getting an eight percent increase on your benefit. Okay. So if you were to I wait, you. if you were to wait till age seventy, you would get thirty two percent more than you would have at at age sixty six. Okay. Thank you very kindly. You've been most helpful. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Dan. Good luck to you. The, all the best. Thank you. Okay. Well, that, that, she asked the same question I did earlier about uh, waiting versus taking now. It's, well, it's important to know that, that yeah. income test as well. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, uh, People have told me, how can you be working and still getting Social Security? And 
because I tell you, well, I'm over 66. Yeah, once you're over 66, there's no income test. Okay. So so you can make as much as you want and still collect your benefits. Uh, and, and one other thing that, that, that the Social Security makes it just a little bit more complex, the year you turn 66. So the months before you turn 66, there's also an income test, and that's roughly $40,000. So so if, if you make over 40000 from January and say your birthday is, say I turn 66 in June, I can't make over 40000 from January to June without a reduction in benefits. But after you turn six, your, your birthday 66, there's no more income test. There's a lot of details here, Mike. And, and, I, and I, me- I remember when I went to the federal building downtown to apply for Social Security, uh, they didn't ask me a lot of questions about my, my financial goals or anything. And so I guess, how, are there people there that are employed by the IRS or the Social Security Administration to help you uh, make these choices? Social Security will not give advice. Uh, mm-hmm. And so my, my friends down there will essentially take your order listen to you, they're not going to tell you exactly what to do. And so you definitely want to bring up uh, records. You would definitely bring up, is, is, is collecting off my spouse's record going to pay more than collecting off my own? And, and also, if, if, if you're divorced, uh, you can collect off your ex-spouse's record. And so you've had been married for 10 years. Uh, it, it, that's something to remember as well. And that's not going to mess up your, your ex-spouse's benefits at all. He or she may, may, may never know that you're doing it. But you can always collect off ex-spouse's record if you're not married, and you must be married for 10 years. It's funny, I had a case last week that, that, that uh, the person was married uh, two different times for over two, 10, 10 years apiece. So we actually had a uh, situation that she took off one ex-spouse, waited a year, took off the other ex-spouse, and then when she turned 66, we, uh, we went off her own record. So there were strategies involved. And, and, and there's good software out there on the Internet to do it. I think Kiplinger has one that, that, that I think it's 30 or $35 to do. Or go to an advisor like myself or any other uh, advisors that, that have the designation of uh, NASA, National Social Security Advisor. Okay, it's time for another break. Uh, now that we're doing one hour, we get a break at 1.30, and we'll be back in a few minutes uh, after our 1.30 Welcome back to Log Talk, ladies and gentlemen. This is Don Hortes. I'm your host. We will be here for another half hour with Mike Napier from Haran Associates. He'll be dealing with financial planning, in particular of fashioning Social Security as part of your retirement uh, nest egg. Uh, Mike, we were talking before the break about um, taking off your spouse's work record. When that happens, does the spouse take dollar for dollar the the other spouse's uh, uh, monthly uh, check or or, or percentage of it? Okay, so so, uh, good question. So it all depends. Uh, If you can't take off your spouse's record until that spouse, the spouse record you've taken off have turned 66. Right. Okay, so if if my spouse is 66 and I'm 63, Mm Uh, I can take off my spouse's record, but it will be reduced. Reduced, that's because what I mean. uh, it, I'm still I'm not 66 yet. But once you turn 66, once you turn 66, if I were to collect off my spouse's record at that time, there wouldn't be a reduction. You would either get yours or half of hers. Okay. Um, now, which sort of leads into the next question, Mike, because this happens all the time: the the senior spouse dies, uh, leaving a widow or a widower. What? How does that work? How does Social Security uh, uh, determine what the surviving spouse gets? Okay, so the surviving spouse would get the greater of, of uh, say, my benefit or my spouse's benefit. They're going to get the greater benefit, and so dollar the dollar for dollar, do, dollar for dollar. Uh, and, and again, it, it. So if you take it early, there would be a reduction. But as far as a widow. Uh, the widow could actually start taking age 60 versus 62 uh, for, for, for widow benefits. And, and, and you can't take a widow benefit if you're married. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. Oh, so if you're remarried, you, you can't. Uh... If you're remarried, no. Mm-hmm. So that's why probably a lot of uh, older Americans, uh, if they meet someone they, they want to live the rest of their life with, they don't get married. I've heard <laughs> everyone say, well, I'd love to get married, but... 
there's always Social Security to worry about. Right, or a, or a divorce ex-spouse's record that you couldn't yeah. tap before. Maybe maybe the divorce ex-spouse had a, a larger benefit. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. The strategies we weave. <laughs> um, uh, and I think you made some reference to the other scenario besides death of a, of a, of a uh, recipient, uh, a divorce. Uh, two spouses, they both are 66, um, and um, and then one of them divorces the other, and uh, what's the impact there? I think you already said that that the the spout one spouse can take the work record right of it, the of the uh, of the divorce spouse. It, it would it would be think think about that as you're still married, so you could still take off a ex spouse's record if you were married for that ex spouse. Uh, for ten years or longer. Okay. So uh, and and if and if you, if you remarry and you're married at the time, you, you can't do that anymore. Right. Okay. But let let's say uh, let's say a typical situation, a couple uh, is married in their twenties and they divorce in their mid forties, uh, and then nothing happens. Neither one remarries for the next twenty years, and then uh, the spouse is now eligible for social security. He can, or he can, or she can, then go back and reach back and still look at his ex-spouse's uh, work record. That's true. And so the 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 ex-spouse, the spouse that would the record that they will be collecting off of, it, that wouldn't it wouldn't uh, cause any deduction in that spouse's record. Uh, but that that is true. It, it could have been a marriage that that, that happened thirty years ago. Uh, anyone have any questions they want to call in for particular advice uh, for their particular situation? Call 772-9658, 772-9658, or toll-free 1-877-772-9658. And ask whatever questions you might have to an expert in the field, Mike Napier. Um, another class of people who sometimes get lost in the shuffle are people who work in the public sector, like firefighters or police officers or teachers. My wife is a retired teacher. Um, some of them may be surprised to find out that all the years they worked uh, in the public sector, they're not earning credits for Social Security. Um, so when they turn 66, um, they're obviously going to get a nice pension from whatever school district or city they used to work for. Uh, so how do, do they, are they totally outside the realm of Social Security or can they get something? Or They can that? sometimes, they can get something. And, and so uh, my, my clients get frustrated when I tell them that, that, th- that they have enough credits for Social Security, they can't take the full amount. It's called windfall elimination. And so if you have a public sector job, you're on SERS, you're on OPERS, uh, there would be there there would be a deduction in your Social Security. So you've got to have enough retirement benefits, uh, retirement cre- credits, quarters in the credit. Uh, so nearly ten years of of of, of quarters. Uh, the 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 amount would would be reduced, called windfall elimination. It all depends on how old you are when you take the benefit and how many years you are contributing to Social Security. So there is a table. And there is a calculator on the Social Security website that will help you with that. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, continue with that, but we have two callers waiting. Now the lines are starting to light up, which is great. Um, we have Jay on line one. Jay, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, oh, okay. Is it Jay or Joy? Jay. Jay. Okay, Jay. Uh, what's your question? Okay, so um, your uh, ex-husband, you can get his... Um, uh, Social Security. Wonder if your ex-husband has remarried. What about the second wife? Will she get Social Security also? That's right. So, good question. Great question. So the the so the uh, the and that particular person, there might be two people going off that uh, his record. So if if you were t- you could go off his record, and his current wife could go off his record. And so there wouldn't be any deduction on his Social Security, and, and he wouldn't even know that it was it was happening. And both women would get the same amount. You would get you would, well not maybe not the same amount. It's it's uh, the greater of uh, of half of his or yours. Okay. So it depends on what the 
each of the ex-wives is earning at the time. That's right. So that's and another wrinkle. And how long they've been married? It, you've you've got to be, you you would have to have been married uh, ten years to him, mm-hmm. and 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 the, but the current the current spouse the, the, the current spouse wouldn't have to be married a certain amount of time. Okay, then I have another question, if if possible. Go You're ahead. just talking about the windfall elimination. I am an uh, a retired teacher, and the Social Security uh, contacted me and said I did not have enough um, quarters or months. So I wasn't eligible for anything. Is that true then? That, 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 that may be correct. So typically you, you need 40 quarters, so yeah. r- roughly 10 years of, of yeah, Social Security I, paying. Yeah, and I didn't have that. You didn't have it. No. But you've been a very good teacher all these years, and I'm sure um, <laughs> are, you are retired now, right? Yes, I am. Okay, well. And, uh, and, and I do, and everything is fine. Thank you. And thank you for answering my question. That's welcome. fine. I'm glad we could help you. We have Mike on line, too. Mike, welcome to Ask Law Talk. operator for assistance. Oops. We lost Mike. <laughs> well, hopefully Mike will call back. <laughs> we, we are Mikeless for the moment. Well, we're, <laughs> well, we got a lot of mics in the room, but they're all <laughs> microphones. Okay, let's go from there. So we were talking about... Um, the public sector, and I guess Jay's call kind of brought that to light. I mean, a lot of people start out right from the get-go working as um, public servants, and they never get the opportunity to uh, work in the private sector. But uh, the the flip side, though, is that they have a very good system, like OPERS and the teacher's system, and the firefighters have their own system. And so that's the, um, that's the counterweight there. Um, what about uh, people who are on long-term disability? Um, I get a lot of clients like that myself, uh, and um, f- for some unfortunate reason or other, they are no longer able to work in their jobs, and they work for companies that had as one of their fringe benefits disability insurance, where they get income. Um, and um, oh, Mike is back. We have Mike on the mic, so let's uh, go to Mike. Uh, are you there? You got the wrong mic, but yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, what what Good can we question. do? That's okay. Um, what can we do be, for you? I'll be 62 next year. How do I find out where the breakover point is where I can work and receive all of my Social Security? So uh, are you uh, – are, are you, uh, next year, are you still going to be working, earned income? Yes. Okay, and so sometimes it's not wise to take it at age sixty-two while you're still working because if you're making over fourteen or fifteen thousand uh, dollars, so your Social Security is going to be reduced for every two dollars you make over fifteen thousand. It's going for every two dollars. Go ahead. How long do you have to work before your income doesn't matter? Age sixty-six. Sixty-six. Right. Okay. The next question is: My ex-wife is on Social Security now at the age of fifty-six. How would that affect me drawing on her? How would how would that uh, so uh, you're, you're not going to drawing SSI? Okay, you're not going to be able to collect on hers until she's sixty six. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling back. Um, so basically, um, the that's an interesting question. His his spouse is on SSI Social Security. Okay. Right. Um, so at any event, uh, so we're back to the, um, long-term disability issue. That's where we were, uh, when Mike called, um, I've seen policies that, that, that under long-term disability, you may get a, a certain percent of your top three years of, of income or a certain percentage of that. Um, and, and if you're, if you are disabled in your earlier years, like 40 or 45, you can get that, but then what happens when you're eligible for Social Security? Can you double dip and get the Social Security and the disability insurance, or is there an offset? That's another good question. So typically, the way long-term disability works is when you become of age for for retirement benefits, uh, say age 62, your long-term disability payments turn into Social Security retirement benefits. Uh, So so essentially, it extends approximately what you're making on long-term disability into Social Security. You're getting the same check, just different, just under a different system. And I imagine that's up to the, um, to the terms of the disability insurance plan. 
I mean, well, that's true too. Right. So. I mean, yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of people would say that's not fair. I want my Social Security and my disability insurance. I paid for it, but if the plan says you can't, that's that's right. And so you know, you're, you're talking uh, so Social Security disability or a private disability plan too. Two different things. <laughs> Well, here we go with another mic. Oh, I'm not sure That's if this is thing. the first mic or the second mic, but we <laughs> have we have Mike. Are you there? Hi, I sure am, and you got the first mic. I got the first mic. All right. Yeah. Well, and and the guy answering the calls is also Mike. So uh, <laughs> fantastic. This is a uh, this is one of those things where Jupiter is aligning with Mars. In any event, um, Mike, uh, what's your question? Well, my question is, I am a working teacher. I am 66. Uh, I am drawing Social Security because I have uh, about 65 quarters in the private sector. Good for you. But I've I've been told that when I retire, I will lose dollar for dollar my Social Security or my retirement. Uh, So if I would, say, draw $45,000, on retirement and supposedly about fifteen thousand on Social Security, uh, I will lose fifteen thousand dollars a year, even though I've paid in all of these years. What can I do? That doesn't sound right. Does no, it? it doesn't. Doesn't sound right. Typically, there's at least a minimum amount that you'd receive. So uh, maybe off offline, uh, we should talk about that. I'd like to see your your statement. Uh, okay. and get you some more information on that. I, I don't know if that if that information is true. Uh, well, well, basically, what where I'm hearing it from is SDRS, State Teachers Retirement System. Right. And they're going to deduct uh, whatever I make on Social Security. T- a tip. So, so typically, uh, if if you have enough credits for Social Security, there's a tip. There's typically a minimum amount. A t- that, yeah, go ahead. I'm that, sorry. That you would receive. Uh, from Social Security. Tell you what, Mike, uh, why don't you, uh, uh, we can put you on hold for a little bit and get your phone number, and uh, Mr. Uh, Napier can call you back uh, at a a later time and get more details on your problem, okay? I really would appreciate that. Not a problem. That's why we're here. We'll talk to you soon, Mike. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound right. It seems to me that if you have your quarters in, you've paid your dues in the private sector, and they shouldn't be able to take it away from you just because you later started working in the public sector. That's right. Some, some, uh, maybe it's mis, mis, misinformation, but we'll we'll get to the bottom yeah. bottom line of it. Uh, what about uh, we talked about disability? We talked about public sector. What about uh, pension plans? I, I know they're a declining feature on the landscape, but a lot of people still have pension plans, and they get a certain amount of money per month. Does Social Security act as an offset there as well? Sometimes. So so this is uh, non-governmental pension plans, I think, was, is what Don's talking about. Right. You uh, work for a Ford Motor Company, maybe a UAW Ford-administered plan, and something so like that. And so sometimes inside these private plans, they'll have uh, some kind of uh, Social Security offset. And I've, it's it's plan by plan. I think the best way to do it, and, and typically the benefit statements, Don, typically they, they'll, they'll estimate what that windfall will look like. So it's inside the plan, and it's case by case basis. And and inside the 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 the, the, uh, the plan. So you got to look at it case by case on that. And I'm seeing less and less of that, Don. So. Yeah, but right. I mean, it, it's startling. When I was younger, that was the. Um, the flagship way to uh, earn money after retirement. You get a check every month. It was called defined, what do you call it? defined benefit plans. But now more and more clients, including a lot of our business clients, Mike and our firm, are opting for 401k plans where it's more of a defined contribution. The money goes into a, a self-directed family of funds, and you can invest the money and hope for the best. Maybe you'll hit a windfall. Maybe you won't. I, I, does Social Security have any say so there as to how much you can draw from your plan? I don't. Is, is there an offset like there is with pension plans or disability? No. So I, if, I wouldn't if, think so. Yeah. So if it's a 401k plan or an IRA, an individual retirement account, there wouldn't be an offset uh, there. You might get taxed a little bit more, but there wouldn't be an offset. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, changing the subject a bit, um, you know, we're getting close to the end here. 
a lot of decisions have to be made when you decide to take Social Security. Do I take it at 62? Do I take it at 66? Uh, do I want a spouse of survivorship? Let's say you make a decision, and and then later on you said, oh, geez, my plans have changed. I, w- I was just laid off unexpectedly, or now I'm sick with something, and uh, you know, I want to start getting the money now. Can you do that, or is it too late? I mean, is, is everything decided at one point when you first make your choices, or can you later on have a do-over? Right. So up to uh, a year or so ago, you were, you were able to, to change your mind and pay back all your benefits. Uh, so if I started taking at 62, and at 65, you could go back to Social Security, pay all your benefits back, and, and, and start over again. Now it's, it's a, 12, a 12-month rule. What's so, that mean? So I can start taking my benefits at 62, and at 63, change my mind, pay all the benefits back, and then start getting the increase again. So you've got 12 months to change your mind and pay them back. Not too many folks do that. What happens if you decide 12 months in one day that you want to change your mind? It's too late. Too late. Well, that's <laughs> too interesting. Late. It's good to know that. We have Jack on line one. Uh, Jack, are you there? Yes. Uh, welcome to Law Talk, Jack. Uh, what kind of question do you have for Mike Napier here? I've got a question. If one spouse uh, retires and starts collecting Social Security, the other spouse is working for the public sector uh, and continues to work, uh, can they collect on their spouse's Social Security while they're still working? So so one spouse, uh, I, don't, I don't understand your question. So one spouse... Uh, well, private section. Is it private sector? And, and that spouse is retiring? It is retired and collecting Social Security. Okay, and and the and the other and the other spouse, it's in the public sector. Right, never not eligible for Social Security. Okay, and so, uh, so what's your question? Well, is the while well, the spouse continues to work in the public sector, is uh, he or she eligible to collect on the spouse's Social Security if she's old enough? He or she's old enough? No. No, so so the one that's in the public sector right now. Yeah. It, is it, how old is that? How old is the first spouse? The one that's in the in the private in the private sector. Oh, I don't I don't have any ages. I just you know the hypothetical question. Yeah, I I, I my I believe you cannot. I, I'd have to double check that rule, but I I, I don't think uh, if if they, if they're in the, the Opers or Stur system. As they're still working, a they have to be over sixty six as an income test. But as they're still working, if they're over sixty six, can they collect off your spouse? Yes. And and, and then and then stop it when they go to Opers or Stirs. Yes. I, I think the I think the answer is no. I'd have to double check that though. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jack. I appreciate your call. That's unfortunate. I would figure that it's one thing that you can collect Social Security for yourself if you've been in the uh, public sector. But it would seem to me that you should be able to work off your wife's record uh, just as if you didn't have any job at all. Let's say you were a stay-at-home husband or something. There, there is lots of ways. There's lots of loopholes. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, That's strange. Yeah, looking at each one uh, makes sense. Yeah. Um, what about uh, minor children? Are, are, can they be treated like spouses, too? Can a minor child uh, collect off... Uh, uh, his or her father's or mother's uh, work record? Yes. And so this is a rule that I, I, I don't know that. I don't think too many people know. So uh, for example, if if I'm uh, I have clients that that, that 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 this that they're doing this, if I'm age 66 and I have minor children, so if I'm age 66 and I start social security benefits and I have minor children, uh, my children can also collect off my record at my age 66. And so uh, that that's that's a loophole that's still out there, and, but there there's a family maximum of, of typically uh, around four thousand ish that you, as a family you cannot collect. What so, is yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, okay, so so some folks use this as almost like a college savings vehicle. Uh, you, you know, you're you're age sixty six. You have a you know fourteen fifteen year old. That fourteen fifteen year old can collect off your record until their age eighteen. And that's and, and, and the spouse, if the spouse is uh, is as underage, they can also collect. It's a big loophole. So you can have multiple beneficiaries at the same time. Multiple beneficiaries at the same time for for minor children. So if you have minor children and you're 66 or older and you're collecting, you can you can those children can collect off your record. I didn't know that. That's I'm glad you said that. I'm sure a lot of people are very interested mm-hmm. to hear that. Right. Um, 
Uh, what about uh, widow benefits for minor children? If let's say those spouse died. So, so they're called survivor benefits. Uh, under the uh, if you if you have children under the age of 18 or 19 while still in school, uh, they, they would collect some benefits. And, and surviving spouse, so uh, if, with kids under the age of, of 16, can also collect Social Security benefits. I have a, a family member whose spouse died. They had two little children, and uh, they're, they're, they, the kids are both collecting $850 a month until they turn age 18 or 19 if they're still in school. Uh, it, it's, a, it's also a, 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 a tremendous benefit out there right now. Um, I see we're coming up to the end of, we got about three more minutes. I, there's another question I always get questions on. A lot of my partners do because we work with uh, uh, tax issues and give tax advice. Um, how are benefits taxed? I get a Social Security check now uh, every month, and uh, at the end of the year, I'm dismayed to find out that uh, I received a 1099. Of course, I should have expected that. And then I also realized that I didn't have a lot taken out for, like with W-2s, they take it out for you. But with Social Security, uh, there's no deductions for uh, uh, taxes. Uh, and um, so you, you're, you get hit harder because you don't have those withholdings. Uh, um, they're taxed like regular income, correct? They are, and so it's funny that Social Security is a is a payroll tax, and then when you start when you start collecting it, you've got to pay taxes on it. So it's it's a it's a it's a question that would probably need further detail, but essentially it all it all depends on how much income you make. So a married couple, if they're making over thirty two thousand, and it's actually a modified adjusted gross income that we won't get into because we don't have time. No, we don't. We have to come back again. So. So thirty two thousand and above, you're paying fifty percent tax. So fifty percent of the benefits are getting taxed. If you're making forty four thousand or above, uh, you're paying eighty five percent of your benefit is taxed. So uh, there's 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 really uh, so if you're making thirty two and below, there's no tax. Thirty two and above, at least fifty percent of your benefit would be taxed at ordinary rates. At ordinary rates. That's right. Even though you put a lot of money into it. You don't you you don't wait till you draw all that money out before you start paying taxes. They want their taxes done. Yeah, so. well, that, that's not fair. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of things aren't fair. Uh, we can talk about that forever. But our time is up, Mike. I really really appreciate your coming on the show. I want you back sometime. Oh. I'm sure we got a lot of calls, and hopefully there'll be others. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in to Law Talk, a uh, public service program brought to you by Schwartz, Mainz, Ruby, and Slavin. We'll be back next week. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your patronage and listening in, and we'll see you soon. Take care.